in fever with Arthur Shaffey. This week, Vitter. are so good at puzzles. I mean, I thought I was good at puzzles, but uh, turns out I'm not at all. No, really bad at them. I didn't even get the piano one. Oh, oh now I've given away there's a piano one. I mean, uh, I didn't get the piano one if there was a piano one, but if there wasn't, uh, maybe I did get it. I don't think I did though. There was a piano one, wasn't there? Oh, well, I'll find out in a minute. Um, anyway, I'm talking about the Easter egg puzzles that uh, Douglas set last time. Um, well done, you've solved them all. Uh, here are the winners. So the first one was for people who were 10 or younger, and it went like this. Okay, forget I said anything about pianos before you listen. I've got a wooden lid, but I'm much more than a box. I've got a lot of keys, but I haven't any locks. Except this one. If you press down on my pedals, you won't get there any sooner. I'm not that fond of fish, but I really need a tuner. It's a piano, that one is a piano. Well done, all the people who got that, you were brilliant. Um, the first person to get it with an explanation and with their age in brackets was Annabelle Labour. So well done, Annabelle, you win. Um, the only thing is, Annabelle, you put your age as age 10 or younger, which just seems quite an odd way to say how old you are. So just checking you are age 10 or younger, or you were putting that for someone who is, in which case, fine. Uh, but also, at more or less exactly the same moment, somebody else sent my friend John a message on Twitter with the explanation and their age in brackets, uh, which obviously confused him a bit because he didn't know I was doing this. But uh, I've spoken to him and we've sorted it out. And that person was Rebecca Watts. And she was replying on behalf of her children or friends or colleagues. Uh, Romilly 10, Calanthe 7 and Madeline 7 and they all worked it out and they all knew it was a piano and sure enough oh, there is your egg there it is share it nicely won't you yeah oh, and don't worry you won't have to share one um, between Annabelle and Rebecca's gang because I cleverly bought an extra egg in case I ate one actually I bought two extra eggs one in case I ate one, and one in case I accidentally ate another one. But I only accidentally ate one, so you can have the other one. Good. Now the next puzzle was the Herc level puzzle. And we'll come back to that uh, because, well, you'll see why. Uh, then there was the Martin level puzzle, and that one looked like this. And the first answer with an explanation was from Dawn T. And she said, backgammon set. The words make pairs with the words either side. There and back, back and forth, eggs and gammon, gammon and spinach, aka nonsense, shampoo and set, set and match. Well done, Dante, that is exactly right. And sure enough, if we check the backgammon set, we find your egg. Well done. So then we come to the Carolyn level puzzle. Now, this puzzle turned out to be quite a bit more difficult than the Douglas level puzzle, which made mum laugh a lot and also say quite right too. Anyway, the Carolyn puzzle went like this. Cheer up Ray, river animal approaches. If that sentence contains clues to two across and two down, three across and three down, four across and four down and five across and five down, then what is one across and one down? And the first person to get this with an explanation was Graham Cole. And Graham correctly worked out that it's a teeny tiny little crossword. And cheer up means elate. Ray is manta. River animal is otter. Brilliant. Approaches is nears. And if you put all of those in the box, then that means that one across and one down, well, we must have hidden the egg either in a demon or a lemon. And we don't have a demon, so it's probably in this lemon. Ta-da! Well done, Graham. So, that just leads, oh no, it doesn't, it leads two puzzles. Uh, it leads the Douglas level one. Now, quite a lot of people got the answer to this quite quickly, but the first person to put all of the links down was 
Wooly Penguin. Great name, Wooly. So Wooly's the winner. Uh, but Brunhild explained it in a bit more detail, so I'm going to use her answer. And it goes like this. She says, OK, here we go. Takes deep breath. <gasps> the person hinting at the otter was Screaming Argonaut, who took their name from Birdhouse in Your Soul by They Might Be Giants, which got their name from the film They Might Be Giants, whose title was inspired by Don Quixote, who had a horse called Rocinante which was also the name of the camper van in John Steinbeck's travel book, Travels with Charlie, which got its name from Travels with the Donkey in the Savannah, which was written by Robert Louis Stevenson, who was born in Edinburgh, and the highest point in Edinburgh is Arthur's Seat. And my name's Arthur, and I'm sitting down. So, if we have a look at where I'm sitting. Ta-da! So that just leaves us with the hurt level puzzle. So that one, went like this. An American comedian and senator would make me into a fictional scientist, a German one would make me into a real scientist, a football fan would make me into a composer, but left alone, I'm just a big mug. And the first person to answer that with an explanation was Jonathan Broad. And Jonathan says, the US comedian and senator is Al Franken. German for one is Ein. A fan of West Ham FC is a hammer. Add Stein on the end of these to get Frankenstein, fictional scientist, Einstein, real scientist, and Hammerstein, composer. The egg is in the Stein, which is a big mug. Well done, Jonathan. You are correct. So, well done. But then, Jonathan added something else. He added... Oscar Hammerstein was, of course, the lyricist rather than the composer in the Rogers and Hammerstein partnership. Richard Rogers was the composer. Well, I thought that's a shame. Now I'm going to have to disqualify Jonathan Broad for getting something wrong. So I checked. And then I got Mum to double check. And it turns out Jonathan's right. Which means Douglas is quite hard to say this um Douglas well he's um he's wrong <laughs> sorry that's really weird to say it's like saying the queen is on fire um he is he's he's wrong he made a mistake and not only did he make a mistake but also and this caught Herc's attention he made a mistake in the puzzle which he said was a Herc level puzzle meaning it was really easy because Herc is so stupid. So uh, that led to Herc and Mum having quite a long argument about who got to tell Douglas he was wrong. And uh, eventually they decided that Herc, after the lockdown, uh, will be working for OJS Air for free for a month. And also he got to tell Douglas. And he told us how it went. Uh, apparently Douglas said that he knew perfectly well that Hammerstein was a lyricist and it was just a simple slip. And uh, Herc said, yes, absolutely. Uh, he quite understood. Douglas mustn't worry about it. These things come with age. And Douglas must remember that Herc will always be there with him in the flight deck if Douglas comes over all confused and thinks he's back in the war flying his Spitfire. And then um, Douglas said some things which Herc didn't tell us and uh, which... Douglas didn't mean and later apologised for. Uh, you see, Douglas was already in quite a bad mood because his two really tricky puzzles, which he thought were going to keep you occupied for two days, got solved in 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's not funny. Um, so anyway, uh, Douglas and Herc uh, came to an agreement as well. And the agreement is that in the future puzzles that Douglas sets, there will be no Herc level. And in return, Herc is going to stop calling Douglas at six in the morning in order to sing him a medley of hits from Oklahoma. So that's all good. Uh, so that means that uh, for you guys, by which I mean Annabelle and Rebecca's gang and Dawn and Graham and Woolly and Jonathan, these are your eggs. Enjoy them. Uh, so if you leave me an address in the comments, I will send you the literal physical eggs. And if you send me an email address, I'll send you a picture of you eating the egg. And if you decide you're actually fine for both eggs and pictures of eggs, then um, I'll give you a hearty well done. 
In fact, I'll do that now. Well done! Brilliant. Uh, so Douglas is working on some new puzzles and he says that the Douglas level puzzle in the new batch is going to wipe the smile off your face. I, I did try to explain to him that that's not really what I'm trying to do with these videos, but um, he wasn't really in a listening mood. Uh, anyway, he's not going to do that next time, because next time, this is brilliant, we are going to have another round of 20 questions. You remember the game with the tin? Only this time, Mum's going to play from next door, because she's found something in the attic. She says, I don't even know what it is, and uh, she's going to bang on the wall, yes or no, uh, in answer to your yes or no questions. So put yes or no questions about what Mum's mystery object is in the comment section, and I will ask them next week. Well. Not even next week, in about three days' time. Until then, bye! <laughs>